You know, I would note in the course of this conversation that none of the Democratic members of this committee chose to address the substantive legal arguments that the plain text of this amendment would allow Congress to ban books, to ban movies, and to silence the NAACP. We heard lots of statements about intent. We heard lots of Democrats saying, we don't intend to ban books. We don't intend to ban movies. We don't intend to silence the NAACP. But this is the Senate Judiciary Committee, a learned body. The majority of the members of this committee are lawyers. We're talking about the text of a constitutional amendment. And so the inchoate intents of various members are far less relevant than the actual language that is being proposed to be inserted into the Bill of Rights of the United States. So let's talk about the plain language of what this amendment would allow. Well, for individual citizens, the senior senator from California said that those on this side of the aisle had misunderstood the amendment. For individual citizens, it allows, quote, reasonable speech. So that should make the citizenry quite comfortable, I assume, that reasonable speech is allowed. I find it a remarkable idea that Congress would presume to deem what speech is and isn't reasonable. I would note, early in our nation's history, the Alien and Sedition Acts, Congress thought, were reasonable restrictions on speech. Let me tell you something. The First Amendment's not about reasonable speech. It's about unreasonable speech. The First Amendment says politicians in Washington don't get to decide what speech from citizens is reasonable and what speech isn't. When the Nazis wanted to march in Skokie, Illinois, look, the Nazis' speech is the definition of unreasonable. It is bigoted, it is hateful, it is offensive, and the First Amendment gives them every right to express those bigoted, hateful views, and then to have the rest of us condemn them for their views. And the Supreme Court rightly said, the Nazis have a right to their unreasonable speech, and like John Stuart Mill said, the best cure for bad speech is more speech. What an astonishing concept that Washington politicians are telling citizens, we will allow you reasonable speech. I think Michael Moore's movies are utterly unreasonable. I think they are naked propaganda. And you know what? Michael Moore has a right to keep producing them over and over and over again, reasonable or not. And then how about citizen groups? Citizen groups get even less. Citizen groups get no rights under this bill. Several folks said, we do not intend to ban books. Well, Simon & Schuster is a corporation. Under the explicit language of this amendment, what can Congress do for corporations? It can, quote, prohibiting such entity from spending money to influence elections. Not reasonably regulate, not do it. Prohibit. Under the language here, Congress could prohibit Simon & Schuster from publishing or distributing Hillary Clinton's book, Hard Choices. That's what the ACLU said. That's the text of it. Whether or not anyone intends to ban books, this amendment gives Congress the power to ban books. How about movies? Paramount Pictures is a corporation. Under the text of this amendment, Congress could prohibit Paramount Pictures from making movies about politics, making movies that make fun of Democrats or Republicans. NBC is a corporation. Saturday Night Live is run by NBC. Saturday Night Live does wonderful caricatures that have had enormous impact on politics, skewering politicians in both sides. Under this amendment, what could Congress do? It could prohibit Saturday Night Live from making fun of any politicians. What a staggering statement. And by the way, other corporations that could be prohibited, the NAACP, the ACLU, La Raza, Sierra Club, Planned Parenthood, MoveOn.org, Human Rights Campaign, Amnesty International, the People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, every one of those is a corporation. Under the language submitted here, what could Congress do? It could, quote, prohibit every one of those from speaking about politics. That is breathtaking. Most of the groups I just cited are on the left. They, ha they have a right to express their views. So does the NRA. So do groups on the right. 
Citizen groups have a right to express their views, and politicians should not be engaged in the business of silencing them. Senator, wish to offer his amendment. I am happy to offer my amendment. The uh, clerk will report. Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to call up the amendment. The amendment I'd like to call up is Amendment 14088. As I uh, said, the clerk will report. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if you would, I'd like to read this amendment. It's a short amendment. The, the amendment would replace this proposed constitutional amendment with a different constitutional amendment, the full text of which would read, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people to peaceably, uh, peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. You will note this amendment is word for word the text of the First Amendment because I don't think Anyone around this table can do a better job than James Madison and the Founding Fathers did in the Bill of Rights. So. And we should be protecting the free speech rights of our citizens, not giving politicians the right to muzzle individual citizens and citizen groups. The, uh, the ranking member of the subcommittee has offered an amendment. The chairman of the subcommittee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this amendment was offered in the subcommittee as well. So we are all familiar with it, not only from our reading of the Constitution, but from the uh, senator from Texas's effort. I'd like to address two things, if I might. Senate Joint Resolution 19 would authorize Congress and the states to implement reasonable, content-neutral regulations on campaign contributions and spending. I'd say to my colleague from Texas, you missed that part, content-neutral. As the Supreme Court noted in Virginia versus Black, the protections afforded by the First Amendment are not absolute, and we've long recognized the government may regulate certain categories. May I ask the chairman a question? Would, you, would the chairman yield for a question? Of course. Uh, several times you've read the words content neutral. I, I would ask, in the amendment, where are those words found? Well, it's well-established First Amendment precedent, and I'm just about to read it to you. But, so but, but it's not in the amendment, is that correct? Please. Can let this... I'm just asking, you keep reading those words, and I'm asking, does it appear in the amendment? Senator, no. finish his statement. I, I would say to the senator, who is a former Supreme Court clerk, you know these precedents as well as I do. So when This is an amendment to change the Constitution. No, it is to change it, but clearly not to change the First Amendment precedent, which says the protections afforded by the First Amendment are not absolute, We've long recognized the government may regulate certain categories of expression. When you talk about unreasonable speech, I understand things that are unpopular are protected under the First Amendment. But certain things are not protected. Libel is one of them. Child pornography is another. The senator is well aware of it. I cannot, can't think of how many times you have flogged the NAACP in your arguments against this amendment. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I would like at this point if... Uh, there's no objection, to enter into a, a record and a letter supporting the underlying amendment, Senate Joint Resolution 19. This amendment is supported by a number of citizen groups that you say are going to lose all their protections because of this. Included in those groups would be the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. So you ought to think twice before you keep referencing an organization that's going to be hurt by this amendment that openly supports it. Greenpeace, Sierra Club, it's a long list. They don't see the fear that you have, and I'm glad they don't because there's no reason that they should. The First Amendment, as the court has said, means the government has no power to restrict expression because of its message, ideas, subject matter, or content. Nothing in Senate Joint Resolution 19 would change that principle. I urge my colleagues to oppose the amendment offered by the senator. The, uh, the letter will be made part of the record. The clerk will call the roll on the amendment. No. no. Mr. Schumer. No, by proxy. Mr. Durbin. No. Mr. Whitehouse. No. Mr. Tobacar. No. Mr. Franken. No, by proxy. Mr. Coon. No. Mr. Blumenthal. No. Ms. Corona. No. Mr. Grassley. Aye. Mr. Hatch. Aye, by proxy. Mr. Sessions. Aye, by proxy. Mr. Graham. Aye, by proxy. I by proxy. Mr. Lee. I by proxy. Mr. Cruz. 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 Mr. Cruz.
Mr. Flynn. Aye, by proxy. Mr. Chairman. So disappointed. Aye. Aye, no. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. And uh, as Senator Schumer be, yeah, be recording voted as no in person, yes. and the uh, clerk will call the roll on SJ Res 19. Mrs. Feinstein. Aye. Mr. Schumer. Aye. Mr. Durbin. Aye. Mr. Whitehouse. Aye. Ms. Kohler. Aye. Mr. Franklin. You're going to make your. No. Aye by proxy. Mr. Coons. Aye. Vote before you leave. Mr. Blumenthal. Aye. Mr. Corona. Aye. Mr. Brassley. Uh, no. Mr. Hatch. No by proxy. Mr. Sessions. No by proxy. Mr. Graham. No by proxy. Mr. Cornish. No by proxy. Mr. Lee. No by proxy. Mr. Cruz. No. Mr. Clay. No by proxy. Mr. Chairman. No. Yeah, I. <laughs> the uh, amendment will be reported to the floor. The uh, uh, we will stand recess subject to the chair. And I thank all senators for their, both sides for their cooperation in getting us through here today.